you have been a little bit of a nomad the last, well, certainly season and a half, what, I mean, I mean, does this feel right for you? Is there something about this? Give or take, yeah, obviously, it's a bit of a challenge you've got on your hands in terms of where the club is, trying to fight to establish themselves in the division. But personally, you in a good place? Yeah, personally, I am. I mean, it was, um, you know, I suffered that injury at Preston and that honestly was probably one of the lowest points in my career. Even... Even after doing my ACL, I think the hamstring injury I got at Preston was honestly one of the lowest lowest points of my my career, even mentally. Um, and that was that was simply because when I did my ACL, I didn't obviously I hadn't had a past of injury after injury, and um, you know feeling like I was progressing, and then boom, I was hit with something else. Um, but I'm I'm feeling. Feeling really good now. Obviously, as you said, um, I left Preston and then went to Milton Keynes, who at the time were absolutely flying. Um, I knew Liam Manning um, from when I was at uh, Ipswich years and years ago. Uh, I think he was under 15s or 16s, maybe even younger. And um, and Liam Sweeten, who had who had come from from Palace over to MK Don. So I, I knew some some of the of the coaching staff, and that kind of made me fall back in love with football again in a way not that i fell out of love with it but it made me because they were so close to achieving something that would have been so good um i kind of it gave me that love back again that kind of spark and the fact the fact that i thought i'm i don't want to stop i didn't want to stop i didn't want to stop at the playoffs i didn't want to stop but i wanted to win that whole playoff thing which for me, then, in my head, when I'm thinking, oh, I've had all these injuries, X, Y, Z, I'm, now the contract was coming to an end at, at Milton Keynes, and um, I was just, I was just desperate then to get back into playing football, and I didn't really mind that we had a short break that year because it means that once my agent had found me somewhere, then someone had come to the, you know, someone had, had picked up the phone for him, that. I would be back playing again and you know i've signed at forest green and as you said it is a, it's a challenge obviously because of they've come up they lost a few of their players at the start of the season and it is a bit i haven't played league two but i imagine it's going to be a big step up like league one to the championship is a big step up and there's some massive teams in league one now that probably shouldn't even be there but i'm enjoying playing football and i'm i'm back playing football week in, week out, playing Saturdays, Tuesdays. And, you know, I had people that were saying that he's not fit, can't last these amount of games, couldn't couldn't last two, three weeks, can't do Saturday, Tuesday, can't do this, can't do that. And now it feels like I'm starting to get back to my old self that's playing Saturday, Tuesday, that's scoring goals, that's kind of, you know, my name's getting back in people's mouths, which is obviously a good thing for me. Um, but... At the end of the day, my, playing football was the most important thing to me, and I've got that love back for the game. And you know, I just I'm enjoying every single day now that I go in and train, and just looking forward to the match days and showing what I can do again. I mean, I'm trying to imagine both physically, but also mentally, what a two-year hiatus, which is what you had with your ACL, you describe, but Palace mm. kind of takes out of you i mean it it takes crucial football years obviously uh, on the the field but the the levels of resilience and persistence you must have had to learn uh, must be off I the think, scale aren't they yeah it was i mentioned the the hamstring one that i had at preston and that was that was probably more difficult to handle than my acl and that's probably down to the fact that before I'd done my ACL, I hadn't really had any injuries before that that had been long-term, maybe like the odd calf that had kept me out a week or two. But before that, I can't remember when the injuries I had. And then from my ACL, it was almost, when it happened, I knew straight away. And I, I knew, I didn't know what the feeling was. I didn't know, I didn't know that I'd done my ACL, but I knew it wasn't good. I knew that this, when I felt the twist, I thought this is bad. And um, 
in your head, you almost process that easier because you half know what it's going to be. You know how long the time frame is. You can't cheat an ACL. You can't cheat the rehab. You can't, you can't cut corners anywhere in that rehab or that process. And mentally, it was, I thought to myself, right, it's going to be nine to 12 months. And I can't change it. I can't sit and cry about it every day. I can't sit and be like, oh, why has it happened to me? What if? And obviously, you have, you have to obviously absorb them feelings, them emotions that when they come in, but it's then how quickly you can change that into being right. It's nine, nine to 12 months and you just got to get on with it and you just got to get it done. And it's a grind and it's times like, I think I done mine, I done mine. It might be the end of November, maybe the end of November when obviously it's dark in the mornings, it's getting dark early. So you'll go into training, getting in for probably eight o'clock which then it's still not even really light then you're leaving the training ground at three 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 thirty four where it's starting to get dark and it's then the miserable nights and obviously that doesn't it's not very um i, I say it wouldn't be the easiest thing to to kind of keep that momentum going and that that mindset for that long but once you get over the fact that you know it's going to be nine to 12 months. That for me was easier than I'd gone into a tackle at Preston and it wasn't as if I was sprinting and, or I jumped and, and something happened. I was forced into a position that was unnatural. And then, then it just, it did what it did to my hamstring. And that was more frustrating because I thought this isn't, this isn't something that I haven't been, this isn't me physically, where I've sprinted and, and pulled my hamstring. This is this is just bad luck. This just can't be happening to me. Um, so it was easier to accept the ACL because I knew the time frame, I knew it was going to be, and mm -hmm. I hadn't had any history before. And then the Preston one was I'd had the history of being like of, of getting over injuries, getting over, getting over. Finally, I got to a place at Preston where I was fit. I trained for probably three months before that, um, two or three months with Preston before that even, before that game. And then boom, it's just all taken, it's just all, it's like a carpet just got pulled from under your feet after two minutes of the game. It was just, that was probably, that was the hardest thing. I'm, I'm just trying to think of your kind of decade because I was lucky enough to be hosting the Football League Awards back 11 years ago when you won Young Player of the Year and Apprentice of the of the year and you had a heck of a lot of adulation you were trying to keep your feet on the ground you scored that worldy goal for for Ipswich I mean I, I wonder how that kid then thought the next decade might play out and I also wonder what Connor Wickham now would say to that young kid back then do you know what it's funny because now there's obviously a couple of players in the team that are a bit more experienced like myself um in terms of age and we always say when you're that kid who's 16 and you've got someone who obviously now in the in the changing room i would be almost a senior figure but only at 29 i'm a senior figure and when you try to explain to the boys coming through the 16 17 year olds and you try and talk to them and you can see them looking at you thinking oh, what's he talking about and I was that, I remember I was that kid that you think people are just getting on you or people are just in the games, if you do something wrong, even though you're a 16 year old kid, you're still getting hammered by, by some of the older lads. And I think now I look back and I'm like, I was that young kid who was saying like, oh, just let me play my football, just let me, and, but, now I, I kind of take that approach and let the boys kind of learn. But if they need advice, obviously I'll speak to them and try and give them advice on when to play, try and speak to the boys about what I know about the game or how I feel like we can do stuff better in that experience. And um, obviously you never know how your whole career is going to pan out. You never know, you know, I, I could have won I could have won those awards, as you said, and then two years later, completely disappeared off the scene. It's just, you just football can change overnight, literally, or 
And I mean, I'm, you know, I'm what, happy. you know what, Connor, life can change overnight. I don't think mm. any of us are ever ready for the changes that come yeah. along. There'll be a little cycle in life. There'll be something that we do and enjoy doing. And then all of yeah, a sudden exactly. it's suddenly over quicker than you, you, you expect it to be. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's just why you've just got to take every opportunity when it comes, really. I mean, you, when you're 16, 17, 18, you, like I was when I was when I was picking up them awards, you don't know how you're almost naive to, to what the future is going to hold. You're naive to, you know, when I was when I left Ipswich and I went to Sunderland, I was naive to the fact of obviously, you, you know, the Premier, everyone knows the Premier League, but you're a bit naive into the fact that I was a kid going into that environment, into the big, big worldwide of Premier League football. And it is 10 times, 10 times more, you know, 10 times quicker, 10 times um, stronger. You got to think quicker. People are so much more intense. There's so many more staff around the place to help. And you see how much goes into those into those teams in that league and then you understand you know what what you have the level you have to get to to make it successfully into that league and stay in that league and you had the other element there at Sunderland I guess as well which was when you've got a club that keeps fighting to stay in the division and changing the manager and then you've got to get used to that the guy that signs you is not the guy now managing you and might not see the strengths in you that the previous person that's a lot to take on for a young kid as well isn't it yeah definitely um there's so much that goes into it and it's all kind of you know different managers prefer different players different systems different formations they have different philosophies um and, you know i went into a sunderland team that was i think the summer that i signed we they probably had an overhaul of maybe like 10 players and it was i was then kind of in as an 18 year old kid i was in the change room with kind of wes brown and um john o'shea these boys have won numerous numerous premier league titles champions leagues every cup and then the next minute i'm sitting i'm sitting next to them and it was you then become your at that point then you're not in awe of these players they're like you're they're your teammates and it just becomes kind of a, the normal situation it was it, it was even for me like playing against the players that i'd looked up to like fernando torres was my was growing up he was like the one who was when i was young or say young when i was probably like 13 14 15 he was he was the man, do you know what I mean? And then when I finally got to play against him, I was thinking, that's Fernando, it's like my hero, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, But then as you get in, obviously the seasons go on, it just becomes the norm then, which is yeah. incredible, really. You're, you're making me feel incredibly uh, old. Fernando Torres feels like he was about five years ago or something for you to suddenly be telling me is half your lifetime ago that you were looking up to. Is that, aside from maybe not going into a, a challenge that caused you a, a big injury, is there a is there one thing you would do differently with your career, Connor? Um, if the answer's no, no that's fine. I'm not, it, it's not that wasn't a loaded question. I'm sort of almost relieved that you're having to fish for an answer to that one. Yeah, I wouldn't say I would do anything different in my career, but obviously injuries, you can't, you can't predict an injury that's going to happen. You can't predict, you know, the future with injury-wise. But, no, I wouldn't because you never know if I chose a different path, who knows what happened. Who knows what might have happened, what might not have happened. I could have, you know, gone to a different team, gone to a different area and something could have happened. That could have been, you know, I might, anything could have happened. But, you know, I'm proud of the career I've had. I'm happy with the career I've had. Obviously, I still feel like I've got, in footballing terms, in the dressing room, I'm kind of one of the experienced. But nowadays, players are playing to 36, 37 years old. So I was I've technically, you to know, say, yeah potentially still got another seven eight years and i believe in those seven to eight years that you know i've still got the quality i've still got the hunger i've still got 
you know, um, the ability to play at the highest level. That's what I, what I believe. I just need to get fit and show it. And, um, you know, I'm being given, given the opportunity now at Forest Green to kind of get fit, show what I can do. And, you know, when I was a young kid, it was you just play football and whatever comes with football, you can't, you're not playing, going, I'm going to play well just to get a move. I'm going to play well just so people see me. You just have to play well and play well and play well and not think about what goes on the outside and let the outside deal with that itself and you just do what you need to do on the pitch because ultimately that's what's going to determine how far you go. Yeah, well, you've been doing that for a long time. You were doing that when there was all those accolades at Ipswich and everybody was linking you to big moves. And I think you you were always quite level-headed there, weren't you? And tried not to read too much of it and just concentrate. I hate the phrase, just concentrate on the next game that's yeah. coming up. But it is one of those... It is one of those fundamental principles of football. Tell me, do you, do you, you did allude to, and I don't want to overdwell on the injury thing because we discussed it a lot, but you, but you did allude to perhaps perceptions of you and stuff. Is that one of the key things for you now to go on and hopefully have another six, seven years in the game? It's just to have an injury-free season, bang a load of goals in, do stuff like you did last weekend and fingers crossed it just shows people that you're out there and still got a hell of a lot to offer yeah I think because I still feel like I've got so much to give and it's I do I don't I don't want to carry the burden of people saying oh he's injured he's this he's not capable of doing that and I know because I know I am I always knew I have been um and you know, as I just said, I mean, given that opportunity now at Forest Green, I know my body inside out now and I've got, you know, coaches, and staff and, and um, physios I work with and um, the, obviously the coaches, staff, the physios, the team at Forest Green, are, to be honest, they're unbelievable with managing my training loads so that I can recover properly at home and what I do at home then, you know, if I'm not feeling 100%, they'll, you know, you can manage loads, you can manage training sessions and um, recovery sessions and putting extra days off feet if you need and that's what they've given me really is a, is a platform that I'm um, being able to train off train often train every day and be there on a Saturday be there on a Tuesday and you know turn up and, and, and feel good and that's it's just the place just what I've needed really is a bit of a bit of um, you know, adapt, probably adaptation in terms of the training side of it and the loading and um, the physical attributes. And then once I get on the pitch, that's when, you know, that's the most important day of the week. There's a Saturday and a Tuesday. So, you know, I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting there regularly every week. So, you know, I think that is the doubts that people have had in, in me previously is not my ability or not the fact that, you know, my, my qualities is, well, can he stay fit? And now I'm managing to do that. So I'm feeling like I'm in a really good place at the moment. The quality's in no doubt. They only need to go and click on Twitter as you <laughs> had to, to watch your goal back a, a, a hundred times. Finally, I'm going to mention those words, persistence, resilience again. If somebody's listening to this and they're going through a bit of a, let's say, challenging time, what would your advice be to them? In, in the injury, in, in the football side of it. Just, 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 just I, I don't know, sort of messages we could draw from your experiences over the last few years. What would I think what, what your message What kind of helped me, you? what helped me a bit, and I touched on it um, earlier on today, actually, and when I was speaking to someone, is the fact that in, in the industry we're in, we're so lucky, we're so blessed to be where we are. We're so, we get it easy, really. Um, and there's so many more people in the world, you know, that are not as fortunate as we are, not in the position we are. Um, we're able to do something that, you know, we love every single day and get, and get paid well for it. And people, you know, there's people that aren't that fortunate, people that are sick, people that aren't well, people that do have problems. There's always someone else there that's worse than you. And I think, you know, that's kind of what got me through is I've got an injury in my calf, an injury to my knee that's going to keep me up for a year, but someone could have something that's going on for, they might have to have treatment for the next four or five years and kind of 
snapped me out of feeling sorry for myself and right get this done and then your time will come so there's always someone worse off than you are as well keep going it's been an inspirational yeah. chat i'm so pleased for you you got that that goal you can go away and watch it another hundred times now thanks for talking to us on the official no podcast take care thanks very much <laughs>